and welcome to Tom Myers versus the rest of the world. Primary elections were held last week. Pennsylvania Senate candidate David McCormick started his election night speech by entering to Lenny Kravitz's Are You Gonna Go My Way? With all the troubles Republicans have had, I'm not sure a song sung by someone who performed with his penis hanging out is the best choice for intro music. <laughs> Congressman Madison Cawthorn was voted out of his seat. That's cruel to someone in a wheelchair. Uh, Madison Cawthorn. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Cawthorn warned of a dark MAGA takeover. That's quite ironic considering MAGA rally attendees don't really like any dark people. Oh, <laughs> a man named Ted Budd won the GOP primary for Senate in North Carolina. It will likely be easy for him to win because even if you are simultaneously intoxicated and having a stroke, you can still express your support for him. Hey, Jim, who are you voting for? Ted Bud. Ted Bud. <laughs> we received the first shipments of infant baby formula from Europe. This is, of course, thanks to Biden's efforts, despite being blocked by Republicans. Republicans are very schizophrenic when it comes to kids. Like there's their stance on abortion and then their stance on trying to help out with the baby formula. Oh, every little life is precious, but screw the little fucker if he's hungry. <laughs> I have a theory that Republicans voted against solving the formula shortage because they never stopped breastfeeding <laughs> off of Donald Trump. Oh. <laughs> MasterCard launched a new biometric checkout technology that allows people to pay for purchases just by waving their hand. This may be a problem for anyone trying to pay for a subscription to Pornhub or OnlyFans. An underwater highway was discovered around the sunken city of Atlantis. Amazingly enough, it was still lined with squeegee kids trying to clean chariots. It rained a lot on the East Coast this past weekend. There was so much rain, I received a targeted Facebook ad from Lowe's saying this was the perfect time to build an ark complete with a sale on lumber. There are a handful of cases of monkeypox in the United States. Infectious disease experts are saying that the transmission rate of monkeypox is less than one person. Bad news for amputees, for Brad Williams, and Peter Dinklage. <laughs> a massive solar flare exploded and had the potential to hit Earth's atmosphere and affect the power grid. Or as it's currently known in this news cycle, a welcome respite. Joe Rogan shared a news story about people in Australia being unable to grow their own food that turned out to be false. Yes, Joe Rogan shared a story that turned out to be false. In other words, we're recording this podcast on a Wednesday. It airs on IPM Nation 2 on Fridays and Odyssey Radio on Mondays. <laughs> and now on with the show. Please join me in welcoming Jeff Heisen, Abby Mello, and Gina Brown. Hi, Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. Oh. Jeff, Gina, welcome back. Abby, welcome again. Uh, what's been up with you this week? Uh, I mean, I think we all have to talk about the the obvious elephant in the room, the school shooting yesterday. I was giving a final exam to my grad students last night as we're just, you know, hearing this news. And I just am so grateful that they get the opportunity to go to grad school and past fourth grade. Yeah. 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 As a mom, it's, I don't, I can, it's so hard to scroll the timeline. I get on, get off very quickly because it's, my kids are still in school and yeah. I want to keep it that way. Absolutely. I, and I mean, I'm obviously very upset about the school shooting, but then as I was reading things, I don't know if you all saw this, Matthew McConaughey came out with a, a thing and I, and then I realized he apparently at one point was planning on running for governor of Texas. And then that really pissed me off. And I was like, will celebrities stop running for political office? Like, come on. I want to know what grade you got in your government civics class. Yeah. I knew he was running or was no offense thinking of it. <laughs> right. Truly really no offense to him. It's just all of them. Like celebrities stop stepping out of line. I'm a sub in a local high school. So I'm all over the building. And every time I go into a new room, I check the layout, consider the distance from the front door and remind myself that if there is a uh, emergency, I have to pull down the little screen that uh, uh, that's above the window in uh, on the door. I shouldn't have to do that. No. 
Yeah, and kids shouldn't have to know, oh yeah, we had another active shooter drill. Like they know it by heart, they know where to go, they know the best hiding places. They they shouldn't know no. that, but they do. No, yeah. they shouldn't be aware of, of that these, they shouldn't have to consider that schools right. are enough. Right, exactly. And Jeff, honestly, even though I teach, you know, adults and you're in there with kids, there is a really strange sense of obligation to them that every time we have an active shooter drill, it really hits home to me. And that like, yeah, I know these are adult people and they, you know, we're all equally responsible for ourselves, but I feel a very deep sense of responsibility over them by just being the front of the classroom. There was one day I was subbing and I, and they told me to, uh, cover a certain class and by the way it's emergency drills day and it was if there's a tornado if there's uh, certain certain things are going on and yeah that really hit me uh the responsibility toward these young people i've thought of things like well do i kick my heels off so we can get out faster do i leave my shoes on you know i mean stupid yeah. stuff like that goes through your head i don't know yeah it depends on the price of the shoes because you'd be leaving them behind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they're Manola, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> they are not. Jeff, welcome back. Thank um, you. I missed my first should... week. Yeah, we should say that uh, we, we like to tell people Jeff was uh, on assignment for his other podcast, which sounds nicer than saying he played hooky to go watch the Mets play at Nationals Park because that's <laughs> you have us to live in D.C., so... But I'm glad I'm glad I wasn't Wally Pipped, Tom. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you Google that, you're gonna think I'm a huge dick for chiming in and saying. <laughs> Gina, how about yourself? I'm happy to be back. Yeah, it's been a, a few times, a few weeks, I guess. I've been, you know, a little busy doing some other things, not on other podcasts, because I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> well. I might, but I didn't. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've considered it. Right, right. Just, uh, you know, other things been happening in, in life and stuff. So it's been mostly good, mostly good stuff. But I did want to tell you something, Tom. I thought of you because I was watching the Weather Channel because I'm an old person. And it was a baseball game weather report. And so they were talking about Camden Yards. Clearly they were talking about Oriole Park at Camden Yards and the threat of rain. And the guy, it wasn't the voiceover, it was a guy in the studio, a weatherman said, so there's a strong chance of rain in the nation's capital. Where does he think the nation's capital is? <laughs> I mean, we do slowly encroach upon you guys uh, at times, like, like there's a movement, like we're, we're, we're still divided. Maryland's been divided since like the civil war. Part of us think we're DC and the other part think we're West Virginia. So <laughs> good choices. <laughs> <laughs> Maryland Senator Chris Van Hollen is resting after recovering from a small stroke with fellow Democrats, Ben Ray Lujan of New Mexico and Pennsylvania Senate hopeful John Fetterman recovering from similar ailments, reduced workload is great practice for Democrats once the new Congress convenes following the 2022 elections. With inflation, shortages, and increased oil prices, it may fall upon the voters in November to determine that they prefer the days of unpredictable tweets and unpredictable policy initiatives and a wildly uncontrolled pandemic to now. Joining us to discuss all these various topics, please welcome Summer Austin. Hi. Thank Summer, you so welcome. Thank you. This is great. Yeah. So, uh, Summer, it is a pleasure having you on. I mean, we are, I, I threw together the uh, this podcast, like the various uh, things I wanted to discuss. And a lot of the uh, things I came to discuss was inflation, increased prices, especially increased fuel prices. Being out in California, I imagine you have a, a pretty unique perspective on that. 
Um, I mean, I guess in the fact that I don't have a car, so I ride an electric bicycle, so I don't have to deal with it at all, actually. So, yeah, I'm one of the poors that live out here and don't even have a car. <laughs> I, I know, like, two people who are like me who don't have a car in L.A. It's crazy. So, um, I mean, yeah, but it's like $6 a gallon here, I guess. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it, as if it wasn't, like, expensive enough to live in Los Angeles. It's uh, yeah, just, it's, it's really fun. It's super fun. I'm just scraping by. So <laughs> I know it's yeah. weird. It's like whenever, whenever they talk about places like New York or Los Angeles is, Oh, if you go here, your, your dreams will come true. You know, anything can happen. What they don't tell you though, is that financially you'll get all beat to hell just trying to make it happen. So you just, you know, yeah. go nuts and decide to become famous in ways which the the uh, legal components of the various podcast networks say I can't mention if I want this podcast to stay aired. This is very true. And I mean, I've been doing, I don't know, like I've been in the entertainment industry for like over 20 years now. I'm a teacher also. Some of you are mentioned that you were teachers. I've been teaching for 20 years. Um, but uh yeah, it's a, I, I is a very expensive hobby or profession, whatever. So I mean, you're <laughs> spending way more than you ever, except for a, a very uh, lucky few uh, most of the time. And even the, those folks probably spent a lot of, yeah, acting is very expensive. Acting and stand-up comedy, very expensive. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> In order to get what they feel is an accurate assessment of the American people's psyche 100 days into Biden's term, Fox sent a reporter to, of all places, Orlando to get the voice of the people, as we can hear in this clip. If you had to rate Biden's first 100 days on a scale from one to five being the best, you would rate him what? Suck. Describe why suck. It's un-American. It's absolutely un-American. One. Why? Was I like Trump better? Is that my only choice, one to five? <laughs> because my real answer is minus to the infinite degree. An 80. An 80? Wow, why? Um, because I think he's come through on some issues that are important to the public. Like what? Um, I think he's writing checks frivolously. I have a business background. I don't know how he's going to fund all of this. <laughs> just keep giving people free things and they're gonna just want more. Let me see what I think. I didn't hear his speech last night. You can either be given free stuff or become free. You got two choices, mm. that's it. He's calm mm. and he doesn't lie. I think he's trying, but I think the, uh, his actions speak louder than his words in terms of in terms of uh, dividing the country. Yeah. Well, if you don't see somebody for 100 days, how can you even rate them? That first guy, like mentally, he's like that kid who gets excited because he's just gotten a chance to say a really bad word <laughs> on TV. It was, it was almost like the grown-up version of kids say the darndest things. You know, I was like, oh, and, uh, and what does your dad do? Fart! <laughs> that's, that's, that's Tom, I know that this is an audio podcast, so a lot of your listeners are, would be surprised to hear that most of the people there were 70 or over. But uh, it's interesting <laughs> to me, as someone who's closer to that age than anybody else there, to hear some of these dopes uh, complain about free stuff when, they, when they've been, they're living in Florida, spending their Social Security money and going to the doctor on their Medicare and their Medicaid B plans. So it's it's fine for them to have taken it, but not somebody who's uh, younger or poor or didn't have the life experience that they did. And by their definition, Jeff, they are not free. They're not. Right. They are, that's right. They earned it. They you did. can either get free stuff or be free, said right. one white guy on that <laughs> clip. <laughs> right. <laughs> Versus the other white people on the clip in that diverse city of Orlando. Um, I, I even the the woman who attempted to be smart, who said 80, like was the scale one to five? Yes. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, sweetie. And now please support that with something that makes any kind of sense. But she was still thinking and worried. Also, what is this free thing? I've gotten some COVID rapid tests I didn't have to pay for. Have you gotten anything else that's free? Because I want it. <laughs> what checks is Biden writing? I'm sorry. He's just <laughs> writing all these checks. Right. Says woman with vague business degree who right. prefers the guy who had multiple failed businesses. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm still stuck on the fact that I heard him say, how would you rape his performance? And I was like, wait, what? Did anybody hear that? <laughs> right. I was like, oh. Great. Okay. Um, but to be fair, it's edited very, like, <laughs> you know, very unfairly. You know what I mean? Uh, like, I'm not so sure I could answer. I certainly, certainly could not answer a question about Biden's first 100 days and sound um, intelligent whatsoever. So <laughs> there's just, I can't. And they're asking people on the street. Come on. <laughs> I was confused by if you haven't seen somebody. I don't. I live here and I don't bump into Biden walking up and down the street. And I, I live where I could see him. I'm five miles from the White House. But so, oh. <laughs> so I don't know what that means because I don't generally see people who are truly working. Like these are, you know, even think about people in whatever profession we're in, if they're really working, we don't just see them having a coffee somewhere. We don't see them. So I don't know what that meant. Sit down and talk so you, with you. So you and Kamala haven't kept in touch basically is what you're We talking. haven't, and you know I met her. You know I met her last summer, but we <laughs> haven't. And, and I'm so close, I'm even closer to her because the vice president's residence is only three miles from me. <laughs> Which Gina brings up a very good point. What has she been doing for the last 100 days? We haven't seen her. I have no idea. <laughs> Surely not working or having coffee with me. <laughs> <laughs> what you also I met Elizabeth Warren, so yeah. <laughs> but Tom, what you also had there is indicative of what that channel does. They, if somebody said something bad about President Biden, there was no follow up. There was no probing question. Or you don't like the checks he writes? What checks particularly don't you like? But the person who liked President Biden received uh, multiple follow up questions. She did. Yeah. And they literally found the worst pro Biden person (laughs) possible. Like that's sort of par for the course for that network. Right. That, that's why they edited her back in two or three times. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. There are many people who turn to the advice and guidance of others to make sense of complex economic matters. In this clip, also from Fox, Jesse Waters uses his show to get the perspective of none other than Pauly D from Jersey Shore. Gas now <laughs> is expensive, man. Yeah. I mean, and not only gas. And you know better than anybody, tank tops, Mm -hmm. your hair gel, your hair gel probably costs more than a gallon of gas. What are we doing about this inflation? Does Joe Biden understand how much this is killing this country? It's getting out of hand. It's, it's getting out of control. I'm, I'm, I'm actually sitting back and I'm like, what is going, everything's going up. My, it, this sounds stupid, but my pool guy now, he wants more money. I'm like, what is going on? Everybody <laughs> wants more money. It sounds your funny. Your pool guy, <laughs> your poor pool guy. You better give him a raise. Yeah, he I don't know what it. you guys are doing in Paulie's pool, but he, whatever he's making, double it. <laughs> he's uh, he's a real one. He's been with me since day one, so he gets the race. But uh, yeah, everything up, man. Like I have to like buy my T-shirts from Abercrombie instead of Express. Stuff is getting so expensive now, man. It doesn't even make any sense. That whole thing doesn't make any sense. It was just two orange guys talking. Like I was so confused. Like. <laughs> What are you saying? <laughs> this is why you need to give up cable news, Tom, because you're watching stuff like that. Like it, it doesn't make, it's like nonsense world. If yeah. you're a poor guy, I, shut up about gas prices. Right. Also, but like, I think the idea that ignoramuses think that the president is solely responsible for inflation. It's, 
it's as if I, I, I don't, I'm so confused by their confusion that I, there's no, there aren't any words. Like I, the things that people think, it's almost like, did you ever take a government class or an econ class? Do you know how the world works? Like, do you understand supply and demand? Like, I don't get. You know, I promise you, Pauly D did not pass his <laughs> class. Well, it was during his gel time. <laughs> he was Jim tanning or laundrying at that yeah. point. <laughs> but, but Tom, we have to be give some credit to Fox News for having a real expert <laughs> on the subject. <laughs> on like the subject of what, though? Whatever the subject was, right, right. he knows it. He's an expert. Because he he could boil it down to its essentials. He didn't have some smart-ass professor. Right. You're right. You're right. I mean, I do, I have to say, I do appreciate the absurdist theater aspect of that, though, that clip. <laughs> so absurd. I actually I, want to know what his hair gel costs. Right. I'm just going to say. <laughs> right. I feel like I bet it's a lot more than what it costs any one of us to fill up our tank. Of course, we've already covered this, but gas prices keep going up. A lot of my neighbors are so conservative that filling up their gas tanks is the closest they'll ever come to being on the receiving end of anal sex. Gas may soon become a rare commodity. I believe it. The other day, I ate at Taco Bell and I didn't even fart. There is one way to feel like a winner when you're at the gas pump. When you pay with a credit card and you click yes when they ask if you want a receipt and the receipt dispenser actually works and gives you the receipt. Everybody's always bitching about rising wages, paying people more money to do basic jobs to help keep this country moving and saying, well, everyone will just move to automatic machines and self-serving kiosks to save money and put a lot of people out of work. Gas stations have been self-service for the most part for over 30 years. So if that was even remotely true, it would still only cost $4.50 but not per gallon, just to fill up our entire tank. I should add, this episode was recorded before gas hit $10 a gallon. <laughs> Despite the hardships caused by rising prices, even the most heartfelt effort to ease the costs on one's customers can draw major ire, as is shown in this news report about one store charging less for a gallon of gas. At the Woodman's gas pumps in Waukesha, lines of cars pull in to fuel up. How come you pump your gas here at Woodman's? <laughs> Woodman's has the best prices. <laughs> I just realized a while ago that this was cheaper prices and I just don't really look at other places. I just come here. I saw that it was significantly cheaper than, of course, across the, uh, across the street. It's about 20 cents almost. Uh, more expensive. Those gas stations nearby now suing Woodman's because of their cheap gas. According to over 200 pages in court documents, 12 News obtained Friday, the companies operating the Shell on Main Street and the BP on Lincoln Avenue argue Woodman's violated the state's Unfair Sales Act, which prohibits selling goods below cost and are demanding about $80,000 each based on the number of days they say Woodman's illegally outpriced them. But newly filed court documents show Woodman's argues they can sell below cost in order to keep up with Costco, which they say is their main competitor, six and a half miles away in Pewaukee. In a statement to 12 News, Woodman's is in full compliance with its Waukesha store gas pricing and believes this lawsuit is without merit. As such, we have asked the court to dismiss this action. I mean, it's almost as if oil companies have put just even small businesses into the position where they have to behave like dicks if their competitors are giving their customers a break. Yeah, but you know what? Costco's gas prices are really cheap. <laughs> I have to say, like, I think they have a point about trying to keep up with Costco because that was when I did have a car. That's where I always went. In California, they're under $6 a gallon in the 590 range. Yeah, I hear that the lines are, I mean, everything here, the lines are ridiculous. I went to a Costco once here and I'll never do it again. It was frightening. Um, there's just so many people out here. But yeah, I hear that the lines for the Costco gas are can be up to like a couple hours long, maybe. So yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. I'd like to ask the gas station owners, the Shell and the uh, BP that they showed in the report, how they feel about uh, government's regulations yeah. because i'm sure that they are very anti and they want the government out of their lives yeah they do mm -hmm. I, 
I did some work one time for the Petroleum Association and they're all, you know, all, the gas stations are all owned by small business owners or if they have several, they're no longer really small business owners. They're just business owners. <laughs> um, and yeah, they're definitely uh, keep your hands off my uh, petrol. Yeah, my, my patrol, right? So, but, but here they couldn't wait for the government to to right. intervene. Right, right, exactly. Well, it's similar to when the government, um, the banks don't want the government in in their pockets, but they definitely want the handout that the government is getting them. <laughs> you know, so it's the same sort of game. Not all stories about people at the gas pumps are about financial hardship. There are a few about people being laughed about people being laughingly stupid, as this news clip demonstrates. There's some people that are scared of spiders, but... Would you set it on fire? No. <laughs> How about while you're pumping gas, and if the spider just happened to be crawling on your fuel tank? Is that serious? Is that serious? Oh, what did I see? Is that a spider in there? Well, this guy did, and Susan Adams watched the whole thing go down Tuesday morning while she was working inside the mobile gas station at Van Dyke and 10 Mile in Centerline. He didn't have a cigarette. He didn't have anything on him. So all of a sudden, I looked out, and I see flames. Susan kept calm, hit the gas automatic stop button, and quickly called the Centerline Fire Department. The man grabbed a nearby extinguisher and put out the flames before firefighters arrived. Later admitting to what he did, he spotted a spider on his gas tank. Because he is deathly afraid of the critters, he pulled out his lighter and decided to burn it. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out what happened next. And employees at the gas station have been having fun with the video ever since. I don't like spiders, huh? You know what they say about spiders. Let me get my lighter here and burn that spider off. Okay, oh, 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 oh geez, that's hot. Oh, boy. We say you've seen it on the camera. You dumb so-and-so-and-so-and-so. <laughs> Do you know gas go boom? This charred gas pump says it all. Believe it or not, we're told the man's car was barely damaged from the flames. But his embarrassing mistake didn't stop him from coming back the next day. Susan says almost like nothing ever happened. And he didn't have anything to say for himself? He was sorry. <laughs> he, was, he apologized. He was sorry he didn't know. And, you know, it's just one of them things that happen. Stupidity. That's all I would call it. <laughs> Your stupidity. I mean, whether or not that spider survived, that spider won in the end. <laughs> All I can think is this guy has a car and all I have is a bicycle. Like, <laughs> I think that he should be, I think that his punishment should be that he should give me his car. <laughs> and, you, and, and, and lighter. And you and, should yeah. give him the bike. Right. I am. Yeah. There's actually like a little tiny spider memorial we can't see there uh, on the gas pump. And there's little, yeah. tiny, little <laughs> tiny balloons, little tiny spider. Teddy little bears. tiny flowers. People are bringing little tiny flowers. Yeah. And vases. <laughs> Just a web of sympathy around it. Yeah. <laughs> In conclusion, I was born during the first term of the Reagan administration. To many political observers, that is when we started gearing the needs and resources of this country toward big business under the condition and presumption that they would use the rewards to help the laborers who actually do the grunt work. When it was clear that would not happen, that was when I came along with the planet's first sentiments upon my generation being, you guys are fucked. Of course, this isn't to say that previous generations didn't try and give us hope. I will always remember the last words my great uncle told me before he passed away. He drew me closer to him and in a soft voice, he said to me, Thomas, there is something you should know that will guide you throughout the rest of your life. And with his last dying breath, he uttered, no one eats their words better than a cannibal whose preference is people with tattoos. <laughs> Unfortunately, I couldn't get anything else out of him. Then, moments after he had expired, I had a realization. I knew the rationale behind his final words. And I understood that when it comes time for me to go, whatever drugs my great uncle was on, I want them in bulk for myself. <laughs> and on that note, that's our show. I want to thank Jeff Heisen, Abby Mello, Gina Brown, and Summer Austin. Yay. 
This episode was written and hosted by Tom Myers with panelists Jeff Fison, Abby Mello, and Gina Brown, and guest Summer Austin. Theme music by Jeroen Vandenhuer. Executive producers Tom Myers, Matt Connerton for IPM Nation, and Eddie Carson for Odyssey Radio. Thank you for listening, and please visit tommyers.us. Thank you.